Today we're going to try another experiment. This time we're working on a three-dimensional surface. I had this uh, demonstration piece that I use for my art class on a mask unit that we do every year in Art 1, my beginning freshman level art class. And this is sort of my demonstration for the different layers. Uh, they actually cast it on their face and then I show them how to build up three-dimensional things on top of it. We use cardboard to build large forms uh, and then they use plaster strips, gauze strips that have plaster powder on them to cast it on their face and then also to strap down other forms like these antlers are attached with the plaster strips and then the cardboard is eventually covered with plastic strips. So this side shows the unfinished and this would be the finished version. And then you can see on the snout of this creature here that I have also, there's like this swirly texture that is done with drywall compound that we use to sculpt and add more texture to the surface and you can build up smaller areas like cheekbones and stuff like that with it but it does tend to crack as you can see there so i thought let's see how the acrylic pouring works on each of these surfaces just the straight uh, masking tape the cardboard and the gauze the plaster gauze and then the drywall compound as well <clears throat> so I'm going to paint it, coat it with wet paint first, and then we will do a pour on it. We've coated the mask with wet white paint, and I have my colors here. I have um, iridescent silver, I have micaceous oxide. I have burnt sienna, I have gold, I have carbon black, and I have white, which I need to pour some more of the white real quick. Oops. So there's the white that I just dribbled all in the other ones. So because this is a three-dimensional form, instead of doing one big flip cup that will then uh, be poured on the surface and uh, manipulated, I'm going to do several flip cups that I will then pour on different areas because there are various areas. And I think I might preserve the antlers so that they can be white or gold, I don't know, I haven't decided yet, but probably one of those colors. I want this to be like a color scheme similar to a painting I did recently called Iron Deposit, which I will link that in the upper corner and also in the description so you can see what my reference color scheme is coming from, because I really like the way that painting turned out. Uh, so I'm going with the same order in the cups that I did in that painting, which was black first, and then it was the micaceous oxide, and I remember now that these medicine cups do not pour well like to run down the side instead of pouring. All right, my case is oxide, then the silver. One, two, I'm gonna run out of space. Three, four. Next we have the white, small amount of white. Preserving the rest for afterwards. Then burnt sienna. Then gold. The 
my cup runneth over, so, um, and the other one I did do a little more white, so I'm doing that. That works out. I think we're good. Okay, flip cup time. So the main thing I want to figure out in this experiment is when, when the paint runs, do you lose the cellular effect that you get when it's sitting on a flat surface for a long period of time? Will it all just eventually run off and leave nothing left or will it coat it and stick? Uh, because I have an opportunity for a sculptural project um, to paint something on for a commission and so I just want to see if it would if this technique would work on a three-dimensional surface all right so let's get to flipping um, flip and drop I'm just gonna let it yeah I don't know about that And then we'll do it on the head. I just, I'm losing all the paint. It's just falling right off. Uh, then you can't see the mouth. Maybe I should turn it around for the mouth. I'm going to release half of it and leave half of it on here and hope that whoop, I can get two sides with one cup. Not really. Ugh. <laughs> Maybe I can mop up some of the stuff that's on the the tray for salvaging some of these areas. All right, we'll turn it around so you can see. We'll do the underneath part with the last flip cup. It's not as straightforward as you would think. Maybe I'll do like a tree ring pour on some of these areas that are left. Because I've got some paint left. So I'm pouring what's left in my original cups into one of these flip cups. And I'm going to do like a tree ring pour on one of the ears. We'll see how that turns out. That cheekbone doesn't want to be coated either. Okay. Um back on camera so you can see I've got these two cups and let's see we'll do a little more black um, ah. that was too much my case is oxide then the silver silver Let's do another one. Silver. And then white. Need more white. Sorry, I'm not really explaining what I'm doing. So there's some gaps that I just feel like didn't get coated with paint that I want to fill in here on the cheekbone, here on the chin, um, on the bridge of the nose. Maybe I'll turn it around so you can see a little better. Uh, burn sienna and mug old. All right, before I turn it around, we'll get this chin area. Okay, 
Uh, hmm. So the bridge of the nose needs something. In fact, I think I'm just going to pour the whole... Yeah, I totally missed the part that I meant to get. There we go. Uh, so, I think I need to get the top of the head here. Can you see that? Yes. You might notice that this ear over here is floppy. That's because, again, this side was not completed. Um, this was a demo piece, again, that for my students. So this side shows the understructure for them to see that it's just simply cardboard taped with masking tape onto their original cast form, and the antlers were just simply masking taped on. But then over here, I took it to the next step so they could see that you would then fuse it to the mask with the plaster strips, and then even add more depth and contours with the drywall compound. So that's why this side is better than that side, and that side's floppy and falling apart. I'm going to let that sit for a few minutes and we'll come back and assess the situation. It has been about 20, 30 minutes and so I have relocated for lighting purposes the mask and I also touched up some areas that I felt like were just muddy. I went ahead and poured what was left over in the original pure color cups onto some areas. Um, I think that it did well on the more textural spots. It definitely highlights the texture, such as there, which is nice. I dig that. Uh, where it runs, though, such as this smoother cardboard side, just looks like stripes and I'm not too keen on it. I don't know if the lighting is going to be good enough to get this part under the snout. So this is still a wet shot. We'll let it dry for uh, a day or so and then I'll give you another peek at it. So, I think it turned out pretty well um, on the textured side. This straight cardboard side, it just ran and I feel like it lost a lot of its appeal. But this right here, this area where there was already some awesome texture going on, I feel like the acrylic pouring really accentuated the texture on it. So, if you do it on a 3D surface, maybe it should definitely have some, some thick texture to it before you paint it. I 
There's the underneath side. So let me know what you think. Thanks for watching. Let me know what you think in the comments. Like and subscribe. Click the bell icon in order to get more notifications. And don't forget to check out my paintings and my merch like this shirt on seaholesharp.com. Bye.